After weeks of NFL protests, United Nations issues disgusting ultimatum to every white person in America. There is absolutely nothing more concerning than having an outside source of power threaten your way of life for something that you have absolutely no control over. That is exactly what the United Nations is now doing while we are distracted by the oppressed, quote, millionaire NFL elites and democratic gun control agendas. Now the UN themselves are joining the Black Lives Matter demands of reparations by claiming that all white people should be held responsible for an act committed 200 years ago. That's right, the UN is stating that due to studies, they have found that racism in America is directly linked to past slavery and that the only way to solve the problem is to force all white people to pay reparations. Too bad they missed the fact that racism was constantly uh, a constantly healing wound that Obama himself ripped back open to push his power-hungry agenda for division of America, and let's face it, the UN's bogus demand would violate our Constitution as per our freedom and from unlawful seizures, as well as it being a direct violation of the Bill of Rights per life, liberty, and happiness. Let's face reality here, the average white American is heavily taxed as it is, most of which goes to keep the generational welfare recipients uh, that claim to be, quote, oppressed, living free from any and all financial responsibility. At the risk of sounding politically incorrect, I will go ahead and state the fact that we technically already pay reparations, but I digress. The UN has the power vested to them per Obama, it seems, to come here as a force and do whatever they need to do to make us follow their orders. Not that most Americans will bow to that, but that is the way Obama left it. According to Freedom Daily, while Obama was in office, he allowed the United Nations to start establishing a presence within American cities with a global police force sneaking his plot to give America's sovereignty away under the guise of an organization called the Strong Cities Network. This unconstitutional move was largely criticized by patriotic groups as the Constitution requires a treaty before allowing any foreign military presence to base itself on American soil. The Strong Cities Network, SCN, was launched by the United Nations back in September of 2015 providing the first ever global network of mayors and municipal level policy makers with the stated goal of providing a community quote to counter violent extremism in all its forms. Along with the United Nations responsibility to protect doctrine and enabling principle that allows an international community to intervene when they discover crimes being committed against humanity, the UN can take it upon themselves to safeguard any citizen who they view is being racially discriminated against. To put it in more simple terms, the UN can invade a country with their UN police force if they determine that crimes against humanity have occurred. Now, in an unbelievable power move, United Nations Human Rights Commissioners have ruled they've found alarming racism trends in our country and are threatening to intervene unless white Americans meet their demands and start paying black reparations for slavery. The Washington Post reports United Nations panel says U.S. owes reparations for slavery mass incarceration. The history of slavery in the United States justifies reparations for African Americans, argues a recent report by a UN-affiliated group based in Geneva. This conclusion was part of a study by the United Nations Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent, a body that reports to the International Organization's High Commissioner on Human Rights. The group of experts, which includes leading human rights lawyers from around the world, presented its findings to the United Nations Human Rights Council on Monday, pointing to the 
continuing link between present injustices and the dark chapters of American history. In particular, the legacy of colonial history, enslavement, racial subordination and segregation, racial terrorism and racial inequality in the United States remains a serious challenge as they have uh, has been no real commitment to reparations and in truth and re reconciliation for people of African descent, the report stated. Contemporary police killings and the trauma that they create are reminiscent of the past racial terror of lynching, citing the past year's spate of police officers killing unarmed African American men the panel warned against impunity for state violence, which has created, in its words, a human rights crisis that must be addressed as a matter of urgency. Isn't this precious? Despite substantial changes since the end of the enforcement of Jim Crow and the fight for civil rights ideology, ensuring the domination of one group over another continues to negatively impact the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of African Americans today, it said in a statement. The dangerous ideology of white supremacy inhibits social cohesion amongst the U.S. population. The United Nation now appears to be taking up the cause of these NFL protesting athletes while making the ridiculous claim that there's currently a human rights crisis that must be addressed with a matter of urgency. Addressed how exactly? If the UN determines that crimes against humanity has occurred, how exactly do they plan to respond? That remains to be seen, but unfortunately, this isn't the first time in recent months the United Nations has attempted to pull a power move in our country. After the Charlottesville incident, Anastasia Crickley, chairwoman of UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, CERD, issued a warning to America on August 12th saying, we are alarmed by the racist demonstrations with overtly racist slogans, chants, and salutes by white nationalists, neo-Nazis, and the Ku Klux Klan promoting white supremacy and inciting racial discrimination and hatred, Crickley said. Yeah, it was the Ku Klux Klan, right? Mm-hmm. This is an extremely serious power play move on behalf of the Sharia law supporting United Nations as this warning has only been issued in a handful of countries in the past 10 years where the UN warned third world countries such as Burundi, Iraq, Ivory Coast, Kyrgyzstan, and Nigeria of their actions against humanity. Crickley is now getting the UN to undertake concrete measures against the United States. This is not only a power move, but a huge insult for corrupt organizations such as the United Nations to start attacking our country and publicly calling us out. America has done more than any other country on earth to weed out racism and fight for the human rights of others. Keep in mind the UN is perfectly fine with Christians being massacred by ISIS, Muslims having sex slaves, white genocide in Africa, and the horrifying treatment of women in Middle Eastern countries. The no notion that white people alive today should be forced to pay reparations for slavery that happened 200 years ago is beyond insane. Even if whites were to pay reparations for slavery that happened 200 years ago, how, it, it, how is it fair to demonize the entire white race when only 6% of Southerners even owned slaves? If the United Nations truly cared about the cause of blacks, they'd be raising hell over the black-on-black -black crime statistics in this country, where the FBI revealed recently that 90% of blacks murdered were done so at the hands of other blacks. But as soon as there's several incidents of our police shooting, armed 
thugs in our country, now there's suddenly a human rights crisis that the United Nations feels that white America must atone for. Give me a freaking break. I find the timing ironic. The Democrats are pushing gun control during protests by rich black athletes over perceived social injustices that are blamed on racism, while the UN writes up studies and orders the white people need to pay reparations, and if we don't give in to these demands, they have the ability to invade America and force us to comply by posing as a police force. Think about that for a moment. It all seems quite clearly coincidental, doesn't it? In the past time that we remind our government who they work for as well and tell the UN that an invading force will be treated as such and they will not be forcing us to do anything. Isn't this just disturbing? Just disturbing. And you wonder, Obama wanted to become the secretary there of the United Nations. That's why he was giving power to the UN. Because he wanted, you know, he doesn't want to be the, he didn't want to only be, it just came to my mind, the only president, he wanted to be all, uh, the president of America forever. I think he wants to be the president of the world. <laughs> Can you imagine what this guy, this guy's a psycho. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.